Salt Lake Society is a fabric store offering high quality and even eco-friendly apparel fabrics. Whether you're sewing jeans, lingerie, or swimwear, but it is also a vibrant community hub. From Sewing Machine 101 for the nervous beginner to summer camps for kids, Society is for taking classes with friends or making a new one. Find Society in Sugar House online at saltlakesociety.com or on Instagram at Salt Lake Society. Today on CityCast Salt Lake, the Salt Lake City Council is set to take their first big vote on the proposed downtown sports and entertainment district. Could residents take matters into their own hands? Plus, forget the jazz. Where will the Utah Symphony play if a Bravanel Hall is under construction? Producer Ivana Martinez joins me to chat about the news so far. It's Tuesday, July 9th. I'm Emily Means, filling in for Ali Vallarta, and here's what Salt Lake's talking about. (laughs) Producer Ivana Martinez, good morning. Back from a long weekend for us. Good morning, Emily Means. Did you have a good holiday? I had a yeah, pretty pretty relaxing holiday after what was kind of a chaotic week, uh, which we'll get into in just a moment. But before we get into the news, I want to make a pitch to become a member of CityCast Salt Lake and support our work here. And I really want to sweeten the deal for y'all because members get into our 801 Day event for free. We are now hard launching our 801 Day (laughs) event. Uh, We did it for the first time last year. It's a celebration of our favorite area code and by extension, our community. So that is August 1st, 801. And like I said, members get in free. So... I think that's a great reason to become a member, Ivana. I mean, and there's so many other great reasons to become a member. Ad-free listening. Um, Sometimes we do other events as well. You and Allie have hosted walking tours around this city. And what a delight that has been. And do you know that I love to make a playlist? Oh, I know that. Now everyone else does. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I also love making playlists for um, listeners, and we have little treats like that for members when they sign up. So, And the way to do it is really simple. You just go to membership.citycast.fm. I think there are two levels at which you can become a member and support our work. If you rely on this podcast, if you rely on our sister newsletter, Hey Salt Lake, for news and information and feeling connected to this community, then... We sure hope uh, you join us. Membership.citycast.fm. Emily, let's get into some of the news of the week, because last week you had a very, very long day as you waited for the Salt Lake City Council to meet and discuss this participation agreement, which is for the new downtown sports, entertainment, culture and convention district. Yeah, we're talking about that big project downtown, uh, basically to accommodate uh, both the Utah Jazz and a new Utah NHL hockey team. Mm -hmm. And this is all, you know, the mastermind of the Smith Entertainment Group, a.k.a. Ryan Smith, who is the owner of the Utah Jazz and this new hockey team. That's right. And last week they got the contract for it, or at least a preliminary version of it. When you were looking at it, you talked to Salt Lake Tribune reporter Andy Larson about it. And wasn't it like seven pages back then? Uh, yeah. So what we received on Tuesday was like just an executive summary of this thing that we're calling the participation agreement. It's essentially uh, the contract between Smith Entertainment Group, SEG, and Salt Lake City, laying out the terms of this district that we're going to pay some big taxpayer dollars toward. So uh, yeah, it was just an executive summary. And then they released a 100 36 page document, Ivana, on Friday, heading into a holiday weekend. So y'all, I am going to be honest with you. I have not made my way through this entire document. The full agreement has details about parking, public safety plans, the Delta Center renovation schedule, homeless mitigation, traffic studies, so much that we haven't even had time to fully digest yet. And no one would blame you. That is a lot of pages of like legal jargon. 
Mm -hmm. 136 pages. That was released over a holiday weekend. Crazy. And so we've got some of the takeaways for you. This is something that Andy Larson and I also discussed last week. So if you want even more details, go back and listen to that episode. But $900 million, that is basically the max that SEG will get from us raising our sales tax, from Salt Lake City raising their sales tax uh, by 0.5%, $900 million. Okay, and then we now know that they're looking at spending about 525 million of those dollars on the Delta Center renovations and 375 million for everything else. So this is not just the Delta Center block, which is, you know, where the two sports teams Mm -hmm. will play. This also includes the two blocks east of the Delta Center, which is where the Salt Palace and Abravanel Hall are. So these three blocks, that's the project area for this particular proposal. And I got to say, I hear you saying $525 million to remodel the Delta Center. And I'm Uh like, on what? Besides the fact that, you know, it's not the best place for watching hockey, which is kind Mm -hmm. of the biggest portion of this. It's about, you know, making it suitable for the new NHL team. But other than that, I'm like, that much money for this Delta Center remodel? Yeah. And Andy Larson has pointed out uh, that in his reporting, $525 million for a stadium renovation is probably on the high end of Mm. the spectrum. I think they mentioned at the city council meeting that uh, the average is typically like $500 million. So adding on $25 million to that. And we don't even know if that's that's exactly what it's going to take. These are just estimates, because at this point, Ivana, uh, we don't really know what that renovation is going to look like. So those are the numbers, and we can just tuck those away, because some of the other things in this participation agreement, I think people will be really interested in. Uh, Tell me about them. Monetary penalties if the Jazz or NHL team leave Salt Lake City before 30 years is up. So they are are trying to keep the Jazz and the NHL team in Salt Lake City. They want to play home. The city wants them to play home games at the Delta Center. And, you know, we've heard tell that Ryan Smith is kind of interested in having the Jazz play somewhere else. We've reported that ourselves. Yeah, we have reported it. And also, it was the hugest, it, well, it was a pretty big topic during the last mayoral election, right? Like, right. we had Mayor Aaron Mendenhall talking about this. And it was, you know, we even had some city council members make slight comments when they were getting into office about keeping the jazz here. That's um, right. So, it, I mean, it's a big effort to keep this jazz team here. Yeah, it's a a $900 million effort to keep the Jazz team here. Anyway, they'll have to pay penalties uh, if they leave before 30 years. And so, you know, the Smith Entertainment Group will have to decide if that's worth it to them. Uh, So that's another big thing in this agreement. Another thing that I think is really important for Salt Lake is that there will be a ticket fee for all events sold at the Delta Center. So that is not just Utah Jazz or Utah Hockey Club games. You know, there are so many concerts that happen at the Delta Center. Uh, There will be a fee that goes back to the city into a public benefits account uh, so that the city can actually get something out of this for Salt Lakers. And specifically, they mentioned family-sized affordable housing. So I think that would be a really important investment um, from this ticket fee collection. Okay, okay. So that's a big one. And then one other thing that I think people will be interested in is some assurances for investing in Japantown. I mean, this was a big draw for council member Darren Mono. Like this was one of the reasons he was strongly in the position of voting yes on this sales tax increase is because he wants to see this part of the city, which is located around 100 South, I want to mm-hmm. say that yep. area, but near the Salt Palace. Um, right. It's kind of tucked into a corner. Not a lot of people, I would say, are pretty familiar with Japantown because a lot of it has been destroyed over the years when the Salt Palace was built. And Mm -hmm. it's not being used, I would say, to its fullest extent. And this is 
what he saw as an opportunity to revitalize this portion of our city and some of the historical buildings and keeping those intact and reenacting this this area really right so tell me what's in this this proposal what does japantown get in this contract well japantown gets at least five million dollars in funding for its revitalization and also this contract uh lays out that seg needs to work with uh the japanese american community members in salt lake to kind of re-envision this area and support them and and their vision for it so um we've got some assurances for japantown uh one other thing that people might be interested in is workforce development in the form of paid internships and uh apprenticeships so basically seg needs to support you know our future workers here in salt lake city through these internships through these apprenticeships um and this is really geared toward um more underserved communities in salt lake yeah i think that was a nice touch from the smith entertainment group because i mean this is a lot of money 900 million we should be at least getting some stuff back for this (laughs) right some investments in the community yes and i just want to note that like in this whole Japantown section, I I got to be honest, I'm like I was looking at reporting from Luke Garrett from Building Salt Lake and he, you know, part of the agreement mentions that it like requires SEG to like use commercially reasonable efforts to coordinate da 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 to and like this is the kicker, it's like to facilitate the recognition, revitalization and or redevelopment of Japantown's community. Mm-hmm. But like I don't know what to you means like recognition. I know what revitalization looks like mm. to me, but then this this and and or redevelopment like I, like ke- I, they're keeping their options open maybe. <laughs> um, but one thing we we know for sure, uh, and this was laid out in the agreement, is. Um, Adding historical markers, like culturally relevant yes. markers in Japantown um, and working with the community on figuring out what those are. So we have a kind of Very a blurry broad picture. Yeah. Language here. We're keeping things pretty vague, I would say. And we don't have a ton of renderings for this project at all. And not just Japantown. Actually, we probably have more renderings for Japantown than any other part of the project. Um, but yeah, we still have no idea what the Delta Center will truly look like or what will happen with Abravano Hall and um, the Salt Palace. Those are both county-owned buildings. But what we do know is that on Tuesday evening, the city council is looking at voting on this agreement. And Ivana, the kicker here is that this is not the final vote. This is not the end all be all for this proposal. It's just an endorsement. So it's like, okay, we kind of like what we're seeing here. And if they all vote to endorse, then it will go to a state committee And Mm -hmm. then the state committee can decide, well, yes, we approve of this or we're rejecting this agreement. Can they make modifications to this? You know what? I'm actually unclear about that. I went and I looked at the legislation that uh, created this whole thing. Uh, this is something that the that state lawmakers put together in this this year's legislative session. And uh-huh. I don't see that they can amend the proposal. Their options are reject or approve. Interesting. So, yeah, not entirely sure what that process will look like. But once the committee, once the state committee figures mm-hmm. out what they want to do, um, then Then it comes back to the Salt Lake City Council Mm -hmm. for a final vote, at which time they anticipate also voting to raise the sales tax by 0.5 percent. So that's something that they need to do by the end of this year. Okay, okay. I mean, one of the things that we've talked about on this show is raising the sales tax and why it hasn't been put to voters. It's a pretty big increase. Like, I have to say. 0.5 percent. Yeah. Yeah. And we've seen residents in Kansas City, Missouri, vote no to fund stadiums with taxpayer money, even though the Chiefs are Super Bowl champs. So I'm thinking about Salt Lake voters and how they potentially vote if given the opportunity. Right, right. Well, and uh, the Salt Lake Tribune's Jordan Miller did a really nice story um, this past week looking at 
residents options for voting on the sales tax. So uh, there are essentially two options. One, the Salt Lake City Council decides to put it on the ballot and have Salt Lake City voters vote on it. Mm -hmm. Um, That process seems a little bit iffy, like there's not a clear path to to that happening. Um, But the other way we could vote on this is if after the Salt Lake City Council approves the sales tax, if, you know, they do, and we're thinking that they will. Yeah. I want to clarify this. This is after the it goes to the state committee. Yes. Okay. Got it. Yes. And then the state committee sends it back. And then uh, the council gives final approval to the participation agreement and approves the sales tax increase. So after that happens, one thing that voters could do is force the issue to go to a referendum. So basically, they would need to gather enough signatures. uh, 7,200 signatures is what Jordan Miller reported across Salt Lake City to put it on the ballot and have voters decide in a general election whether they want that sales tax increase. So that's how it would work. Okay, okay. I did see that former mayor Rocky Anderson has kind of gotten a start with a petition on change.org. And Uh from when this story was first reported, he had around like a thousand signatures. So it seems like there are some people who are potentially interested in this referendum route. But yeah, for sure. I mean, Rocky continues to be a thorn in Mayor Mendenhall's side, I think, even after (laughs) even after uh, last year's election when he ran as uh, when he challenged her. Um, So maybe Rocky is kind of like sowing some seeds with this change.org petition. A change.org petition is not the same as an official, you know, government petition. Um, But maybe he's trying to gather support ahead of you know, a a potential vote by the city council. So we shall see. It's quite expensive to collect signatures, uh, enough signatures to get something on the ballot. Yeah, it requires a lot of manpower. Exactly, exactly. And then you have to verify those signatures and make sure that the people who signed your petition are actually registered voters. Um, So there's a high bar for this sort of thing. But, you know, it's not unlikely. Yeah, it's it. It could happen. It could happen. It's an option for sure. Yeah. And in the meantime, I mean, the other way people can weigh in on this is, of course, talking to your city council member. They'll be voting on it at Tuesday's council meeting. Uh, But there's also an opportunity for public comment on August 13th when uh, the city council will be discussing the zoning changes that need to happen in relation to this project, too. So uh, there are a couple more ways for people to weigh in, but... You know, this is this is moving right along. Hey, Salt Lake, this summer, skip the chaos of delayed flights out of state and enjoy a Park City staycation instead. Escape to the mountains for sunny days and cool nights at one of the Stein Collection properties. There's the Chateau Deer Valley, Stein Erickson Lodge, and Stein Erickson Residences. Now you may think Stein Erickson is just for Hollywood celebrities and their entourages. Not so, my friend. This summer, experience globally ranked five-star luxury at a special price, just for locals. Bring the family and get out of the sweltering Salt Lake heat. Poolside milkshakes, fireside s'mores, games for kids and adults, plus family-friendly dining at special rates. I'm telling you, this summer, Park City is for locals. Call for details, 866-996-0034, or visit steinlodge.com to book your stay. Want to know one of my favorite sounds? Here it is. That's the sound I hear when I'm learning Spanish with Babbel. And if you want to learn a new language this year, I guarantee it'll be one of your favorite sounds too. I'm David Plotz. I'm the CEO of CityCast. And I've been doing Babbel for a few weeks and it's been so much fun. This week, I've been learning lots of food vocabulary and how to order in a restaurant. This is one of the things I love about Babbel is that it's about learning the language so that you can use it. As Babbel says, it's designed by real people for real conversation. 
So it's all based on real life situations. And these restaurant lessons are awesome. When I went to Mexico City last year with my girlfriend, I was mute. I was a mute. But next time, I'm going to be ordering the sopes and las salsas picantes. Babbel has over 16 million subscriptions sold. Plus, all of Babbel's 14 award-winning language courses are backed by their 20-day money-back guarantee. Here's a special limited-time deal for CityCast listeners. Right now, get up to 60% off your Babbel subscription, but only for CityCast listeners at babbel.com slash citycast. Get up to 60% off at babbel.com slash citycast. Spelled B A. B-B-E-L dot com slash CityCast. Rules and restrictions may apply. Okay, Emily, we've talked a lot about, you know, keeping the jazz in this city. Something that I want to talk about is keeping the symphony in this city (laughs) because a part of this SEG deal is, you know, as you mentioned earlier, potentially either tearing down a Bravenal Hall or remodeling it. And I got to tell you, I don't know. I don't know. Like, what would our city look like without the Utah Symphony? There's a lot of talk about the jazz, but what about the Utah Symphony? Yeah. Yeah. What about the musicians, huh? What about the Um, arts, huh? What What about about the the arts? arts? (laughs) (laughs) Well, I do think that, you know, having the symphony in this sports entertainment cultural convention district is like something that they want still right because it fits neatly into what this district is designed for yeah entertainment and culture as well um but seg has said that they will support whatever the county decides to do with a bravenel hall because a bravenel hall is actually owned by salt lake county so we don't yet know what exactly is going to happen with this concert hall? The county has plans to renovate it in some form or other. They say that the plaza there is underused. You know, everybody knows that big concrete plaza yes. right around Abravano Hall. I never see anything happen there. I don't know if you've ever been to an event there, Ivana. <laughs> Yeah, the one just outside of Bravano Hall, like where the yeah. grass is. Yeah, I actually have. Um, it, like a couple of times. Like, do you remember when they did ski joring downtown? That's right. That was a really cool activation. But I feel it's usually empty. So, you yeah. know, the county is looking at different ways to use that plaza. They also say that the hall itself needs earthquake upgrades. So something is happening with the hall any way you spin it. Um, but we don't know what's going to happen when that renovation is underway and where the 90 musicians of the symphony will play. I do want to mention really quickly that in this participation agreement with Smith Entertainment Group, there was a deadline set for next July 1st for them to reach an agreement with the Salt Lake County um, with the Bravenal Hall in that. So there is kind of this like tentative deadline looming ahead. But right now it's kind of we're, we're kind of muted on this issue. And there's a lot of questions about potentially where the Utah Symphony would go in case that we do tear it down or, you know, if we go the other way with the remodel. And I got to say, like, some of these options are really interesting to me, Emily. You've you've gone to the symphony, right? Oh, my God. I love the symphony. I've been going since uh, college because they have a really sweet deal for young people. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) You get discounted tickets. Yeah, the under 30 pass. Mm Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's it's it's a lot of it's incredibly beautiful in there. The acoustics are incredible. Not only do you like walk into this beautiful place, but you also have this gorgeous sculpture like the moment you walk in through those doors. Right. And something that um, I saw in Salt Lake Tribune reporter Palak J. Swall's story was that they were looking at a couple of venues, uh, potentially, you know, seeing if the Utah Symphony would fit in these areas. And some of them that were thrown around were like the Salt Lake Tabernacle, mm-hmm. the Eccles Theater, um, potentially the University of Utah's um, theater. I- Libby Gardner Hall? Yeah, 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 yeah. Libby Gardner. But like some of the issues that came up with these like other options was like seating capacity. 
acoustics and like the fact that these halls aren't really intentionally designed for musicians in this yeah. way like they're for performances broadway and even like one of the biggest ones that stood out to me was like well like potentially like the symphony could go to utah valley oh, and i was like pump yeah. the brakes pump the brakes right now <laughs> stop it <laughs> like like who's traveling 40 miles down south to go see the utah symphony Right. Well, okay. Counterpoint, it opens the symphony up to a whole different audience. Uh, There is a ton of growth happening in Utah County. This is not to say I want the symphony to leave Salt Lake. No, no, no. I'm very selfish. I love taking the tracks to a Bravanel Hall. I think it's in such a prime location downtown. But, you know, ton of growth in Utah County. Um, And, you know, it might be a way to introduce younger people to the symphony. Yes, and (laughs) I'm like, you're yes yes anding me. (laughs) Yes, I am. But I mean, like, if the whole if the city's whole point is to revitalize to to activate this part of the city, it wouldn't make sense to take the symphony any other place to move them out of downtown. Like one of the best luxuries of having this symphony, like a world renowned symphony downtown here in in Salt Lake City, is the fact that you can get on a green bike, like bike over to Bravanel Hall. Hey, I've done it. You're the only person who's ever done this. The only person who's gotten on a green bike and worn your symphony gown and ridden your my three inch heels, mind you. (laughs) But a true Salt Lake experience. A true Salt Lake experience. But like going to the symphony, biking to the symphony, getting there, finishing it up, having such a lovely evening, and then going back out downtown and getting something for dinner. Like, going to a restaurant or a bar afterwards and like keeping yourself downtown like like that is the experience that's what we're trying to do with this new district right and if the whole point is to reactivate part of our downtown like why would it make sense to move one of the biggest draws of our city out like we're I think we've been so focused on sports for a minute that we haven't really considered the other factors and it's like There is a pretty big community here that values the arts, that values the symphony and their musicians. And it's time that we get a little bit more vocal about this because it's been sports for a minute. (laughs) Utahns truly love the arts, Ivana, and they're all somehow magically so talented at them in all forms. (laughs) Singing, dancing, musical instruments. They're so good. Um, But listen, I mean, in terms of like where to direct your comments or frustration or whatever, people need to be looking at the Salt Lake County Council. These are discussions that they are going to be having. They've already begun having them. Um, And like you mentioned, Ivana, uh, SEG needs to now commune with the county on what happens with those county owned properties, Abravenal Hall and the Salt Palace. So uh, time to time to go to a county council meeting, y'all. Whenever posture comes up in conversation, we all do that thing where we immediately sit upright and pull our shoulders back. Did you do it just now? I did a movement session with Chandler at Embodied Patients, and after a few gentle corrections, I was surprised to find sitting up straight is incredibly easy. Chandler's practice combines over a decade of study in yoga, Pilates, and the Alexander Technique. So why should you invest in your posture? Let's start with the link between better posture and better breathing. Whether you're returning to activity from an injury, looking to manage pain, or just have the sense things could be a little easier, Chandler will teach you to create sustainable movement habits so that you can enjoy the things you love for longer. Maybe that's running marathons. Maybe it's walking the dog. Visit embodiedpatients.com to book a session with Chandler and give yourself the gift of your own attention. Hey, Salt Lake, the dry, dusty air in this valley is hard on our skin. Fortunately, Crude has been handcrafting microbiome-friendly skincare in Salt Lake City since 2014. 
And because they're local, they know what Salt Lakers need. Crude's plant-based formulas harness the power of nature to clear acne and bring the skin's microbiome into balance. In short, your skin is smart and Crude works by getting out of its way. You can find these gentle and luxurious products at livecrude.com and on Instagram at livecrude, but I recommend visiting them in store at 824 South 400 West in the Artspace Commons. At the Crude Store, you can refill your bottles at a discount, earn rewards for purchases, and indulge in a facial from their master esthetician founder. Mention this ad and you'll get 25 bucks off that facial. That's livecrude.com. All right, Ivana, let's do some shout outs and get out of here. What's yours? Mine is a volunteer opportunity. There is this organization called Coconut Hut, and I know it's been some pretty hot days out here. It, we're about to hit some pretty high numbers this week. I can't imagine being outside right now. It's it's insane. But um, there is this group, and they're doing kind of a drive to do these kits for our unsheltered friends. And it's happening this Sunday at Church and State, this Sunday, July 14th. It's from 10 to 12. And they're basically making these kits to hand out to people and they're looking for volunteers. And I just want to shout them out because I think this is such a great opportunity for people to get involved with your community and help out. So Yeah. And I think grassroots organizing is a good way to do that. This is just one of many incredible groups doing outreach to our unsheltered community here in Salt Lake City. Okay, Emily, what's your shout out? I would like to shout out the Utah Department of Transportation social media crew. We don't often shout out UDOT on this show. No, no we're usually we don't. like shaking our fist at them as they try to expand highways or whatever. But I think they may have just gotten a new social media coordinator. I'm not entirely sure, but I am so invested in what's happening on their Instagram. Okay, t- I have not been on social media for a, a minute yeah. here. Tell me w- what kind of post are they like? It's very, very. Very funny, Ivana. Okay, so one such post, they introduced us to an engineer named Jeff, uh, okay. who must be like one of only a handful of engineers in the entire world who uh, is comfortable in front of a camera. <laughs> I feel oh, like sure. I feel like engineers sometimes have a, a hard time being in the spotlight. But this engineer named Jeff taught us about dirt compaction on okay. a project that UDOT has near Flaming Gorge. That was really cool. Um, Talk they sexy are to also, me. <laughs> I know, like, ooh, dirt compaction. Dirt compaction. Um, and then they also have something going on right now that they're calling Bridge Fest, where they're repairing something like 60 bridges across the state. And they're really, really making it pretty, pretty metal and hardcore and rock and roll. So build bridges, don't burn them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Shout out to the social media folks at the Utah Department of Transportation. I'm having a fun time following along. Oh, I'm going to right now I'm looking at my phone and I'm signing up right now. Hell yeah. <laughs> You're subscribing? <laughs> I'm subscribing. I'm liking. I'm subscribing. I'm following. Yeah. We're engaged. We're engaged. We're engaged. All right, Ivana. Thank you so much for joining me to break down the news so far. Have a great day. Have a great day. That's all for us today on CityCast Salt Lake. Reminder, if you want to become a CityCast Salt Lake member, you can very easily do that at membership.citycast.fm. Regardless, we hope to see you at our 801 Day event on August 1st and celebrating our community together. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more from around this city. Bye. Bye.